I recently talked about why you should set quarterly goals. Today, it's time to talk about how to set quarterly goals. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process for setting your quarterly goals up for success. The first step is to identify your overarching big picture goal. In other words, what do you want a year from now, a couple of years from now? You have to have a really clear sense of what it is that you are ultimately going after so that you can work backwards from that point to figure out what you should be working on now. Step two, identify your why. What is it that you really want here? Why is that goal so important to you? It is shown time and time again that unless you have some deep emotional intrinsic connection to what it is that you are striving for, you're just not going to be likely to obtain it and you're especially not going to be likely to stick with it and do what it takes whenever you encounter resistance or the going gets rough. So dig deep here, really think about what it is that you want more than anything, not the goal itself, but the feeling and the reason behind what you want. Step three is to make a list of as many of the underlying goals, objectives, achievements, whatever it is that it's going to take to reach your bigger dream. Once you have your list, Step four is to narrow it down to the specific goals that you are going to go after in this particular quarter. Choose one to three, but absolutely no more than five goals at any one time. I personally like to set goals for each of the different categories of my life. For instance, every quarter I set a personal development goal, a professional goal, and a family-related goal. The number of goals or categories that are applicable to you might vary. It's also important to keep in mind Warren Buffett's 5 of 25 rule. He says that for every 25 things you come up with, you should only be focusing on at most five of those things at any one time in order to ensure that you are sticking to what is truly most important. Step five is to really define the outcomes associated with each goal. In other words, how are you going to measure your success? How will you know without a doubt that you either attained your goal or not? Now, ultimately, this becomes more of an art than a science, and there are two approaches that you could choose to take. The first is to aim really high so that you are shooting among the stars, as they say. You might be pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and really almost setting a scary goal that feels uncomfortable because you're just not sure if it's that realistic. But at the same time, that's really beneficial because even if you get most of the way there or part of the way there, that's likely going to be farther along than you would have gotten had you not set your sights on something so big to begin with. That's personally the strategy that I like to use because I get a lot of motivation out of having that proverbial fire lit under me and being in competition with myself, trying to see if I can actually do what might feel so impossible. But the second strategy is to aim more on the low end. Make sure your goal is instead very realistic, very attainable, something you can do without a doubt, so that when you do accomplish it, you get that dopamine hit and that reward circuitry is built up in your brain that builds your motivation to keep going and strive for something more difficult the next time. Again, there's no definite right or wrong way to do this. I would start out with whatever feels most right to you. Step six is to break your quarterly goals down into monthly benchmarks. In other words, where is the milestone that you hope to be at at the end of each of the three months in the quarter? Some people also set weekly benchmarks, but I find this to be a little too intense because my weeks vary so much given all the different things I have going on. Instead, I have found the 80-20 principle to be so true, where 80% of the results really do stem from just 20% of the time or 20% of the effort. And so that gives me a lot of peace of mind that even if one week gets thrown off, kids get sick, car breaks down, something comes up, I can still make sure and reach the final point by the time the month is up and certainly by the end of the quarter. 
Step seven is to identify all of the component action steps that are associated with achieving your goal. So you have your monthly benchmarks, those are all great, but now you need to know what specific tasks need to be completed to make those benchmarks reality. Break these things down into as small of an item as possible and make sure to put them in the sequential order in which they need to happen. Step eight is without a doubt the most important step. That is that you have to physically block out time in your schedule each day where you are going to spend at least some time working towards your quarterly goal. The amount of time you might have to devote could vary on a daily basis and it will certainly vary from person to person, but I highly recommend setting aside a minimum of one hour a day in order to really keep that consistency and see the results accumulate over time. The ideal situation, if you can swing it, would be to allocate up to four hours a day in order to complete one full round of the Pomodoro system. If you're not familiar with the Pomodoro time management technique, I will link some helpful resources for you down in the description. To take your quarterly goals up a notch, the following items are all ultimately optional, but they are scientifically shown to really improve your chances of success. Step nine is to establish ahead of time a reward or punishment that you are going to give yourself for accomplishing that quarterly goal. The jury is still ultimately out on whether rewards or punishment are more motivating. There are a variety of studies suggesting success for either one. And ultimately, you probably have a gut feeling as to whether you would be more likely to do something in order to get that reward, right? The carrot dangling in front of you or out of fear of some negative consequence. Whatever it is for you, think now what is going to happen, good or bad, if and when you achieve your goal. Step 10 is to build accountability in from the start. It has been shown that you are so much more likely to be successful when you are accountable to someone else. This can be working with a buddy or a friend, whether they're working on the same goal as you or not doesn't matter. Just having someone that is also trying to achieve something big can be very motivating. You could definitely join a support group or even go as far as hiring a coach. Any one of these options can help. And the important thing is that you have weekly check-ins with that person or that group so that you are staying on track and making sure that you have something to report when you sit down and talk with them. Similarly, step 11 is to track your progress. There are a variety of apps out there that help you track how you're doing. You can definitely track things by hand as well, but the important thing is to isolate the specific metrics that might be associated with your particular goal. There are so many different things you could track. For instance, if your goal was to lose weight, you could track things like calories burned, calories eaten, the number of workouts you did, the amount of time you spent working out, number of inches lost, number of pounds lost. The possibilities are really pretty endless. Whatever it is, think about what applies for your specific goals and keep a record of where you stand on those metrics at least every week, if not also every day. There are going to be days along your goal journey that you feel like you're not making much progress. And tracking is one of the best ways to then show yourself how far you really have come. Because as you look back, you will see that you've done a lot more than you think. You are better off today than you were yesterday. And that really keeps you motivated to go even further. That's how to set quarterly goals. Let me know in the comments if you have already been setting quarterly goals and what one of your big goals is for this upcoming quarter because I would love to encourage and support you. Jump straight into these other videos to get more of my top tips and check out the resources in the description to help you on your goal slaying journey. Subscribe for weekly videos on planning, productivity, and purposeful living. I'll see you back soon. Have a great day.